It's time for breaking bread with Papa. Hey, don't you know? Hey, it's also a show. Oh, lasagna <laughs> booth is great. <laughs> That's all I can come up with. Lasagna <laughs> booth. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, it's brand new. You're Get one of the fancy. first people. Yeah, you're you one of the first. Custom made or somebody went custom out of made. Damn. Yeah, Papa. we found a guy. Who just made this? And I thought when he was making it, like it's gonna take like six months. Yeah, a week and a half. Shut up. Yeah, this guy in the valley who just makes them and makes them like for TV sets or whatever, and and he just banged it out. What about the table? Table uh, was here. I don't know. What do you feel about the? Like, I feel like it, like it should end here. But this is kind of comfortable, right? I like how it goes because it goes past the camera. So right. It's- it, what it is is that it feels like the audience is the other person on the other side of the table. Uh, if the table ends, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it's like you're, cu- it's almost like you're cutting them off, right? But since the table continues, it's like, oh, sit down, enjoy the time. With That's us. what I was thinking when I developed I, it. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. <laughs> A nice long table. Yeah, I baked you bread. Oh, you brought me bread. Okay. You can bring this home. Wow. Yep. It just came out of the oven. Um, it's legit warm. Yeah, I, I know. It literally just came out. Damn, Papa. I know. Who loves you? Papa loves me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had somebody bake me bread before. Oh, my God. Well, now you it, it's you let me know how you like it. I definitely will. Toast I'm... it. Put a little butter on it. However you roll. What's in here? Cookies. Look at Jesus. Blessing! <laughs> oh, okay. Which ones I've never had before? These look good. Oh, wow. What's this? That is, I don't know. I didn't make, oh, that's perverted is what that is. Listen, this is either <laughs> long titties or new testicles. <laughs> we only have two options. Yeah, that is uh, unfortunate in both regards. Can I have one? Absolutely. Thank you. These are cool. Mm-hmm. Thank you for doing this. Last time we were with each other, we were in um, Chicago. Yeah. We were in Chicago. Then wait, 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 don't tell me. I remember you were a host. And I was like, oh, I'm so excited. And I said the EP, I was like, hey, man, when are you going to let me host this bitch? And he said, <laughs> when you ask me nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is a legitimate <laughs> answer. I know. You come in. You come in. You really, you become the boss. A little bit. I don't know. You become the boss of any environment you go into. I had to learn to do that. Did you? Yeah. This wasn't, this didn't just come natural? No, you have to learn to do that because a lot of times I'm I'm uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Or people like to make me uncomfortable. What do you mean? So when I come into a space, usually it's, you have to deal with people, people seeing a black person becoming uncomfortable. Right? Uh Uh-huh. So then I have to deal with other people's discomfort. You see, they're, you're what you're seeing them become uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And so then I get to, and then I have to deal with them being whatever microaggressions they have with me being uncomfortable. So then what I decide to do is, oh, bitch, we all going to be uncomfortable. Right. Because <laughs> I'm going to take over this whole room. Right. Because my energy is going to shift because I'm not going to walk in. I'm, I can't. I'm 40 years old. Right. So my whole life I've been walking into places Mm -hmm. and having to do things to make white people comfortable about me being in that room. Even if it was a room I'm supposed to be in. Right. So now it's, I walk in, I'm just like, what are we doing? What's happening? Hi y'all. So when, when you were young and that in your first, like going out into the world and running into that, Mm -hmm. was it very clear? Like, Oh, these people are expecting something from me. Like I have to, well, here's the thing. I have to diffuse. The, I have to control the energy of this. Like as a kid, yes. What, how is that? You have to learn. You learn in school. Uh huh. Because you learn in school, being in class, that you know, it's. You went to school mostly white kids, right? Uh, it depends on where we live, but mm-hmm. a lot of time, it was either there was only one time, like a few months, I went to a predominantly black school, but mostly it was either predominantly white or mixed. Okay. And so, the one of the first times that a black child experiences racism is from their teachers. mm Hmm. And so you have to then navigate, okay, well, you're not going to write me up all the time. You're not going to do this to me. And so it's like, because there's times it's like your parents can't fight for you all the time. So like a shitty teacher would just treat you yeah. more, it's, more, it's, more uh, they, they judge you more or mm-hmm. discipline just, you more. They're expecting right. you to be a problem more. Yeah, so like black girls get 
black children get suspended from school at a higher rate than any other children. Right. And black girls get suspended at a higher rate than any other girls. So it's just like uh-huh. we're super disciplined. Did you get tipped off by your folks that that was the way it was going to go or it just kind of you just became you just, aware of you it? Just no. Just no. Because early? How early? Oh, you're probably not in school yet. Oh, for real? You're really little because you see people be aggressive with your parents. Uh, so there's the vibe when you go in the world. Like, mm-hmm. for instance, and just to give a very small example. Okay. When I went to Edinburgh for the first time for Fringe. Yeah. There was always people handing out flyers, right? Handing out flyers, handing out flyers. And I'd probably been there less than 24 hours. Mm-hmm. And as a black person, you're accustomed to white people taking you in when you enter a space. Right. Or even when you're walking down the street. Yeah. And I noticed while I was there, no, none of these white people were paying attention to me. Uh-huh. Couldn't give a shit. Right. And then there were these two girls hanging out, handing out flyers and they immediately. Yeah. Get this thing. And they just, their whole body tenses up and they're very aware of me. And I knew immediately they were American. Immediately Uh, these were American white women. Right. And so I go into whatever show I was at and come out and these girls try to hand me flyers. Like, well, we're American. I was like, I know. Uh She's like, why? I said, cause you were nervous when you saw me. Uh, Well, I, Y'all have a nice day. I hope your show goes as well as it came. <laughs> so there's that. So even in, yeah. So they didn't realize, but we're in another fucking country. Yeah. And you still were like, oh, right. You think I'm gonna steal your shit in Scotland? Are you crazy? <laughs> also, you obviously have no money because you could not afford to pay somebody to pan out your flyers. <laughs> who robs broke people other than the government? <laughs> like, who are you talking to? <laughs> Bitch, I'm on TV. Yeah. <laughs> right. But you. God, it's got to be it's such a. It's exhausting, and then there's the there's thinking the, about it as a as a as a child. Yeah, as a kid, yeah. and then there's the weird twofold thing of like the whole. Me and my mom were talking about this morning, where it's like being a black woman is that you're being feared, but also looked to for comfort at all times mm-hmm. because you're afraid of me, but also there's a whole mammy complex around me. Mm-hmm. So it's just like the fact that any white woman at any time will tell me all of her business, no matter where we are. <laughs> in a Target, especially in a Target, because you can make it better. Because I can make it better, right? Once you're a black woman of a certain size, oh, yeah, oh, you have to help these bitches. <laughs> yeah. You have to. You're, yeah, you're like uh, you're like an angel. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm a magical negro. Magical negro. That... I I I work at any store that I'm in, <laughs> no matter what I'm wearing. Right. I, I could be in a Target in a leopard print. Some white woman's gonna ask me something. <laughs> this is not the uniform of Target. I don't know if you know that. Is that a positive part? Is it's... it kind of like because that's a that seems uh, to be like a sign of reverence it's it's a weird place to be yeah because it's like you're looking to me for help mm-hmm. but you're never looking to help me mm-hmm. so white women's tears are respected but white <laughs> women's anger is not that's why feminism hasn't worked <laughs> because white men are like because like bill burr made a great point it's yeah. like we took over the world and brought you with us what are you mad about Right. <laughs> we made y'all the pinnacle of beauty. Your your safety is woven into the fabric of a society. Uh-huh. What are you mad about? How dare you be mad at us? <laughs> right. On the up flip side, my tears are not respected, but my anger is. What do you mean respected? As in, if black women can't be victims of anything. Uh huh. And also, there's the other thing we report domestic violence at a lower rate. Because we are burdened with the fact that if we report it, we will send a black man to jail. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Right. Then if anything happens, so like that girl who, there was a young lady who had a restraining order against her former partner. Yeah. He shows up at her house. She shoots a gun into the air to get him to go away. She gets arrested and she goes to jail. Right. And and, there's, and she lived in a state where that was legal and she still had to serve and she still got some time. <laughs> Jeez. And she's protecting herself from someone who was, mm-hmm. it's on record. It's so complicated to think about multiple, it's like a, It's like playing chess all the time. It's, You're I'm thinking playing, about constant. Uh-huh. Whatever I do, whatever I do. Yeah. It's someone has something to say. Right. It's usually not good. <laughs> or it's super supportive. Mm-hmm. But it's like. And I then it's almost too, then it's too, yeah. What, what do we. Are you over? What are we doing here? Yeah. It's so <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird space to live in where I'm just like, it's, 
Because you're seeing that, like, a lot of times it's, especially like working in offices in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And so I would, one day I was like, where do white women and black men work? Because in those offices it was black women, mm-hmm. mostly black women. The higher up boss was a white man. Right. But you go high, like you got your C, so all your C-suite dudes, mm-hmm. and then your next level down, white dudes. Everybody else is black women. Black women and yeah. white men. So white men higher up. Yeah. And then black women. So your managers, your supervisors, your general employees uh-huh. is black women. Right. So I was one day I was like, where do white women and black men, where is everybody? Where do they work? Yeah. Where Cause are I've they? been in multiple offices. I've been, sorry, yeah. Where are they at? <laughs> Cause I did bilingual customer service. So there would be like people of like, I'd be there with other people who spoke Spanish. So people of a Latin background, mostly mm-hmm. um, Mexican or El Salvadorian, but mostly Mexican. And we're on the same calls because I speak Spanish. Right. So there's Floor, <laughs> and then the other, and then Armando, and then everyone else is a black woman. And I'm just a black woman who speaks Spanish. Right, Confusing right. Confusing everybody. <laughs> Truly, right. just being like, what well, shit? <laughs> All right, okay, you picked up a scale. It's like, yeah. So when did you, when did you realize that you can... Be the last airbender and take control of all of this energy on your own. Um, Was that like later in school? Like, mm -mm. it was. We have this. I started doing theater when I was a kid. Uh huh. So there's first role. I (laughs) third grade. (laughs) Yeah. Um, we had a very. You have to remember it's. So I was in third grade. This was 1992. Probably. Uh-huh. <laughs> so we had a Thanksgiving play and I was playing a Native American. <laughs> nice. His name was Sparkling Water. Ooh, nice. And it was like, there was, I don't even think, I think there was one Mexican girl in class. Right. There was a Puerto Rican girl named Raquel. It was her and then the rest, and then all, everybody else. Any child, I think there was a Korean kid playing something. It was like, <laughs> yeah. anyone who wasn't white was a Native American. Also, That's we funny. were eight. So yeah. it's like, we're, we, the play took place in class. And then. That's good. Did you kill it? I think I had two lines. Maybe. Yeah. Did you make, I, did you make the most of it? I think I just said something <laughs> offensive um, or bowed or something or just held yeah. vegetables. Um, <laughs> but then in middle school, I took a theater class and then in, co- in high school, is when I started doing like more plays, right? So doing like musicals and right like plays and stuff. Yeah, did you find power in that? Um, no, I found. Or are you thinking power? Are you just having fun? Just work. Yeah, just work because I just I told my mom when I was six years old I wanted to become an actor, so this was just on par with what I wanted to do because when we moved back to Miami and I went to a magnet school mm-hmm. and I auditioned for the theater department and actually I forgot the whole story. My mom had to remind me and I was working on the book. Is this in the book, by the way? It is. This is in the book. Hello, friends. Stories of dating, destiny, and day jobs. Yes. I love the title. Thank you. I wanted to call it, don't call it a memoir. I'm only 39. But <laughs> the publisher was like, let's not tell people what to not call it. I was like, <laughs> it sounds, it's hilarious, but okay. Um, yeah. And so I auditioned for the theater program at the magnet school and the lady told me that I could run the lights. Uh huh. And my mother said, no. Yeah. And I was like, oh, cause I came home all excited. It's like the lady said we could run. And my mother was, and this is the other thing. My mother worked at the school. Oh. Uh, because they had like a community center. Yeah. Mind you, this is right after Hurricane Andrew. So the school had gotten destroyed and everything was just a series of trailers. So it was like kindergarten and then fifth and sixth grade was the whole school. My brother went to a completely different elementary school. Wow. And so they had like a community center, quote unquote, with a computer lab. Yeah. My mom said she walked in one day to print out a a resume Mm -hmm. because she was looking for a job. And they were like, you know how to print a resume? She was like, yeah. (laughs) So you know like Microsoft Word and stuff? They were like, yeah. She was like, like, you want to just work here? (laughs) And so that's how my oh, mom started wow. working at my school. Oh, that's because great. She, I don't even know if she printed the resume. They were just like, please sit down. We don't know how to help these old people. Okay, have a nice night. And so. That's great. I don't know if my mother had met this teacher or what. But my mother was like, this is very, because she's mm-hmm. like, this is racist. I know exactly what they're doing. I don't know if she talked to the lady or whether she didn't tell me all the back end. But she was like, you're supposed to be an actor. You ain't running no lights. Yeah. And that's what my mother told me. Yeah. So. We moved back to Atlanta, and I started going to school, and uh, we went back to suburbs. 
then I started going to like a middle school, I had a good theater department, and high school I had a good theater department. But it was having those moments where it's just like, but I've always had to stand up to teachers. Mm -hmm. There was always a teacher that had some fucking opinion. And had something. Uh, for the most part, a lot of, like I had, it wasn't all my teachers, uh -huh. but the teacher that I had my biology class my freshman year of high school, uh -huh. I was always going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this woman. Always. Always what? Always going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this woman. Oh, uh, really? She loved to try to tell me to be, and I'm like 14. Who and are you at 14? What kind of kid are you at 14? Um, I am a kid who, I started taking gifted classes when I was 10, right? Okay. In the fifth grade. Uh -huh. the school in Miami. Sweet. And so I know what's going on. Uh-huh. But and what's your personality? Oh, I have a big personality, but also it's, we moved, I went to five elementary schools uh -huh. in two states. So I had to figure out how to make friends <laughs> oh, with. That's hard. So I would just get somewhere and be like, who are you? What's your name? Da, 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 da. But at the same time, just, everyone's like kind of like inherently shy. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's going on. You want to take the lay of the land. Mm. But it was also like, but I was also like a chubby girl. Uh huh. So then it was just like, there's that aspect of it. Right. So... There's all these layers to it where it's like, I'm black, I'm a girl, I'm chubby, we move a lot. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. And so it's just like, I have to figure out how to be comfortable as quickly as possible. Yeah. Because we're, we could move, we could right. not move. And so, because I lived in, I lived in Miami, Oklahoma, Colorado, and Georgia. <laughs> yeah, Miami. I was born, me and my mom were born in Miami in the same hospital. A room like above mine. Wow. My brother and my father were born in Oklahoma City. They split. We moved to Colorado. And then we moved to Georgia. And I did all of that before I started kindergarten. Jeez Louise. Yeah. Then we do kindergarten. And so, in, but even in Georgia, I went to like three elementary schools. And then we went to two elementary schools in Miami. And then when I moved back, I was in middle school. So I went to two middle schools and then one high school. Wow. So mm -hmm. you, your mom was just trying to find a spot to. She was trying to do. Well, a lot of times in Atlanta, we didn't go to school where we lived. Mm -hmm. So Atlanta still had M to M up until like 2007. So you know my you know M to M. No. So M to M is my uh, minorities or majority. Uh -huh. Busing is what it was. Uh -huh. But it was um, self employed busing, uh -huh. as in like we would use somebody else's address to go <laughs> right? to school in another area. Yeah. Uh, right. So my mother always made sure we went to good schools. Right. And she said it's funny one of her cousins used to make fun of her. Because, like, at one point, we were, like, going to school, actually, in the area we lived in. Mm. And when she said, one of her cousins was like, well, you put them white kids on the bus? Referring to me and my brother, because we weren't taking the <laughs> bus. Um, but, yeah, my mother always made sure we went to good school yeah. in the areas. And then we would move in that area. Uh, is your mom smart? My mother is very smart. Yeah. She went to school. She always said she went to school to do Homer Simpson's job. Uh -huh. So she went to school for, like, nuclear. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. She went That's to Memphis State. So. Was she a good cook? She cooks very well. Yeah. Um, she, because she grew up in Miami, uh -huh. we would always eat like different types of, so we didn't eat like the typical like black Southern food uh -huh. because my mother would also make like Caribbean food or like Cuban food or, or Jamaican food stuff. Like, and we just had that regular at home. Oh man. So my mother was making like curry chicken, curry goat, oh. um, palau. Uh, we always have like, to, like, um, like maduros, like um, plantains, mm -hmm. or like she'd make like tamarind balls. So it's like it's just it was very like oh, a mix man. of because my grandma was from like middle Georgia, okay, she grew up on a farm, right? My grandma was very country, yeah. But my grandmother, her and her siblings moved to Miami in the fifties, and my mother said that my grandmother. So I, by the time I was born, my grandma didn't have an accent. Oh really? And so my mother said my grandmother would read the newspaper out loud uh -huh. to lose her southern accent. Really, mm -hmm. really. And now I have one. <laughs> it's very slight. <laughs> the Atlanta accent is very, yeah. very different. Yeah. But I have, a, I have a, it's funny, my grandma worked so hard to get rid of her. Yeah. And then my mother, and then, yeah. All, she grew up in Miami and all her teachers were New York Jews. <laughs> so she didn't have, my grandma didn't have an accent. Mm -hmm. All her teachers didn't. And your mom's talking like New she's York. Not, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Because <laughs> it's still a Southern, it's still Southern, but also it's like, we also lived in Atlanta for most of her adult life. Right. So she has a slight, we all have a slight Southern accent that can get kicked up when we need to. Right, right. Did you learn to cook from her? Can you cook? I did learn to cook from her because it was just me, her, and my brother uh -huh. from when I was, I mean, before kindergarten. Right. So I would cook. By the time I was 10, me and my mom were making Thanksgiving. 
Yeah. So I'm cutting up collard greens. I'm making stuff. So I started look because like by the time I got to high school, my mother would call like call me like, okay, take the meat out the freezer. So like me and my brother would cook dinner. Right. So it was like when I had friends like I don't know how to cook. I'm like I don't understand what your parents are. <laughs> You're right. Exactly. Like I can make how an egg. You? I'm just like you can't cook chicken. <laughs> yeah. You can't make chicken hot. <laughs> Put it in a, season it, put it in a pan, put foil on it, throw that bitch in the oven. Yeah. It's not, I promise you, it's not rocket science. Also, everybody can make spaghetti. Yeah, of course. Everybody can make spaghetti. Yeah, but there's a difference between learning from someone who really knows what's going on. Because then it becomes almost like instinct. Listen, we all know you drop the noodles in the pan, put a noodle in the pot, <laughs> cook this ground meat, open this jar, boom, spaghetti. Ain't nobody making the gravy. Yeah. Ain't nobody got the whole family coming over, stewing all these tomatoes. Yeah. You open a jar, you open a box, you open a pack of ground meat. <laughs> right. And you go on about your good Christian Done. life. No yeah. one's <laughs> no one's falling up herbs in the big no. Right, exactly. Now, I mean, know. when I was a kid, maybe now people are doing like real like gourmet. Yeah. But No, I know. There was I read an article once about uh, someone had found their, they were desperately trying to find out their grandmother's recipes because so they had such a great memory of like what their grandmother made. Yeah. And then uh, she found like a book that had like the thing. It was all, like you're saying, like everybody now thinks like, well, what was in it? Like what, what herbs was she using? What was she doing? And it was, she was opening a box yeah. of, <laughs> of Mamwich yep. and throwing that in. And it yep. was like, because you cooked every meal. There was no ordering out. There was no going to restaurants. You, you everything. And you were exhausted. We're and you exhausted. were working. So you just, whatever they had, you were just making. And for the kids, her memory is, that was all gourmet. <laughs> and it's, it's funny because it's like, I remember my grandma making, uh, she would do, there's two ways, she would do chicken wings. And there's this like Cuban, it's called mojo crillo. And it's this big bottle. And it's like a marinade, but she would like cook chicken in that. Uh-huh. But it was like it's oil and vinegar, and mm. then it's like uh, bitter oranges, and then there's all these different seasons. And yeah. the bottle's like this big, yeah. And so you do peppers and onions. And so as a kid, Ooh. that's how we cooked most uh, of the meat. Right was in this Spanish, like this Cuban Caribbean, yeah, marinade. I'm like as a kid, I didn't know how else to make chicken <laughs> yeah. so it's like if we're because when like, i had like a barbecue for my 35th birthday uh-huh. um out here in the hills like, like i got an airbnb uh-huh. and i flew in and i was at somebody's house, and it's just like i just bought a bunch of pounds of chicken <laughs> and a bunch of bell peppers and onions uh-huh. and a bunch of ziploc bags and i'm just in the kitchen just getting ready for this barbecue because that's <laughs> yeah. the only way yeah, that we cook, but she would do wings like that. So that was like oh, her man. recipe. She would do wings, and then she would do uh, spaghetti, but with Italian dressing on it. Uh huh. And then just like put that in the pan. I was like, like the a uh, wishbone Italian dressing. Oh man! It's just she'd do that. <laughs> it's amazing. It's it was uh, and I because like I like like a vinegary, yeah. bittery kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah. And so these were like the best. It was the best pasta. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. It was the best because sometimes you just like yeah. Or like remember my mom sometimes would make just like calling just butter noodles, mm-hmm. and it was literally just pasta and butter and ground meat. And I remember as an adult, like one day in New York, and I was just like, I want some fucking. <laughs> and the thing is, I was making it. I was just like. I couldn't get the butter to stick the way my mom. Yep. And I was like, if I put any more butter in here, I'm going to lose a valve in my heart. My, or- my order is fucked. So I'm just like, but I couldn't figure out. Yeah. It's the simplest thing. Yeah. But I don't know how she, because I couldn't get the butter to stick the way she used to get the. It's exact. I mean, I got, it's like, because I called her for the recipe. She's like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's butter it's and butter. ground beef. Water. Yeah, you, you got too much me. water in it. Maybe, or maybe <laughs> she used the water from the pasta. Da, da, da. I don't know what this lady did. I know. It was like, Mom, I didn't get. She's like, Girl, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> she's, it's, she's like, What do you mean recipe? Yeah, butter. I know. My, get off my phone. My mother tried to write down all the stuff that she made, and it's missing so many ingredients. That's it's funny. missing so many like specifics. She's just like, I could tell you what to use, but. And I gave it to like a friend of mine. I had to make sauce. And she's like, yeah, but what do you do with all of it? And, my, yeah. and I asked my mother and she's like, you make sauce. I'm like, well. Facts. <laughs> we have a recipe book of different, like like a notebook of different like cakes and stuff. Uh-huh. And we make a red velvet cake. And Ooh. it's so funny. Cause it's just like, there's this whole, it's like this conversation. Like 
is red because some people like think red velvet cake is just red chocolate cake. Yeah. But we never put cocoa powder uh -huh. in our red velvet cake. Uh huh. So my friend was like, what do you do? And I was like, well, we've got a piece of velvet that's been passed down from generation to generation. <laughs> and you just shred a little bit off of the cake. <laughs> Bingo, bango. Red velvet cake. But, I mean, it's I remember making them as a kid. Yeah. And it's like, because you use, like, baking soda and vinegar as a le leavening agent. Uh -huh. And then it's just moist, as dense as cake. Mm -hmm. We do, like, three layers of it. Ooh. And I was doing a joke about it during the pandemic where I was just like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I miss this. And then my mother sent me the recipe. And first of all, it's a three-layer cake. Yeah. I'm in <laughs> lockdown. It's just me. Yeah. I can't make a half a wedding cake. <laughs> then the recipe for the frosting yeah. is, I think it was two packages of Philadelphia cream cheese <laughs> and then bag of powdered sugar. Was the measurement. A bag. A one bag. Like, not <laughs> cups. Bag. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to be that bitch from Willy Wonka who's the blueberry. You're going to have to roll me out of my apartment. To I squeeze me out. To squeeze this cake out of me. I cannot make this cake now. So my mother gave me the recipe, and I was like, what? She's like, what? I said, it's just me. She's like, no, nah, you can't do that. Yeah, you're trying to kill me? You're trying to kill me. I was like, "You, because you can't. I was like, I'm supposed to divide this up. Yeah. And then it's like, there's pecans on it. And so, oh you my God. and so you put that on there to decorate it. It's a whole it Sounds thing. pretty good, though. It's amazing. Yeah. But one person in lockdown? Yeah. No. Don't do that. Don't. <laughs> you avoid COVID and then die of a stroke. Yes. Because the butter. Can't make a phone call. Listen, I was like, I was trying to get out of here, but that one stick of butter took me the fuck out. So when did you decide to write the book? Was it after the lockdown? Mm. How long have you been working on it? Well, my manager tricked me. Uh -huh. That's how the book happened. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't want to do it. Here's the thing. <laughs> this man called me uh -huh. and was like, what if you wrote a book? And I was like, that sounds different. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. And he was like, well, what if I just make, what if we just have a meeting? Uh -huh. Set up some calls, have a meeting. And I was like, I'll have a meeting? Four meetings later. Uh -huh. So I done sold a book. He's like, now you got to write a book. I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> he tricked me. I was I was bamboozled. I was had. I was hoodwinked. So that's how the book came about. Uh -huh. the, the the precipitating factor is me owing Anscape a debt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so basically they're like, we'll give you money, but you want a book. And I'm like, all right, tomato, potato, let's write a book. How and long did it take? I think it's like a year. That's not bad. So. Um, did it come quickly? Like mm, when you, once you started getting into the groove of it? Well, yeah, because I was working on it with somebody who understood the process better. Uh huh. Because um, I was talking to my manager, and I was like, what the hell am I supposed to do? And I didn't know where to start from, so I called Michelle Buteau. Mm -hmm. And I was like, girl, how do I do this? Yeah. And she was like, well, the best thing to do, she said, start with stories that are too long to tell on stage. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I started. Like, things I was like, I've always wanted to tell this yeah. on stage, but it just it's you need too much context. Yeah. You need too much just backstory for it yeah so that's how i started was stories that were too long that's good advice made. yeah it was amazing shout out to michelle buteau yeah and so then i was like well people want to know about my childhood mm -hmm. uh, people want to know about daily show because there's a chapter in the book called i am not a writer on the daily show <laughs> why is it called that because all of these fucking comics think i'm a writer on the daily show <laughs> because all these comics think all the correspondents are writers on the daily show the writers are the writers right no i'm not in the wga <laughs> So when they went on strike, I was like, la, 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 la. And then SAG went on strike. Mm -hmm. None of the correspondents are writers on the show. Right. Not a single Not one. Not one. Never been. How? Oh. Nope. And but it's so just. So it's an even better gig than I thought. <laughs> yeah. But you're always on call. Yeah. Always. Always on call. So you, I've been sitting in my office and done nothing for a week. Uh-huh. And I've been sitting in my office and been in three sketches and had to be on the show that week. Wow. So you don't know. It's just somebody being like, hey, we need you in makeup in 30 minutes. Yeah. Or we need you in makeup in 10 minutes. Really? Go down to LaToya, get your outfit, go get your makeup done. Jeez. Yeah. That quick? Mm-hmm. They came up wow. with an idea. Or, hey, you got to do man on the street, which is the worst thing ever. Yeah, that is. Why would nice. I want to talk to New Yorkers about anything? <laughs> Joey over there said, "What a great job you did on uh, on John's return." Yes, that was very fun. It sounds you. like you hit a home run. I didn't see it. Thank you. It's um, it was very interesting. I'd never met the man before. Oh no! And so, 
everyone else, all the other correspondents are talking about the election and Ronnie, for some reason, is eating potato skins. And then <laughs> it's just me going, yo, why are you here? It's basically <laughs> what. So I'm kind of just, because they were talking about like Trump and Biden and just like, yeah, all these white men want their job back. Like, you give the job to anybody else. That's perfect. Crazy. <laughs> and he was like, are you? You talk about the candidates, you talk about me. And I was like, I said what I said. <laughs> so that's great. So yeah, it's basic. And I was talking to Desi about it. I was like, I realized yeah. I'm the only one that could do that. Yeah, of course. Everyone else is like, Yeah, hey, let's uh the, the election, the election. I'm like, yo, 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 <laughs> what's he here for? <laughs> Who let him back in the building? <laughs> Ain't nobody else could do this job. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's literally what all of black women's job is. Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> what are we doing? Because one of my favorite things that my friends like that I do is that if a comic is bombing, uh -huh. I just turn to them and go, what's happening? <laughs> is all I say. I'm not just, I'm not saying, I legitimately want to know. Yeah. I'm asking exactly. the real question. <laughs> right. What is happening? Right now. Why am I here? Why are any of us here? Why are we experiencing this <laughs> in this plane of existence? Yeah. Why am I hearing these words? So if someone's bombing and I go, what's happening? <laughs> I truly am asking a question. I want to know what went wrong. Whose fault yeah. is this? Yeah. Which is, it's the thing that is most fun about being in a room with you mm. is that. What? Just that. There's nothing, not one Every room is going to be slightly uncomfortable for some reason. Yeah. Something's going to be happening. Yeah. Right. You know, in the waiting room for wait, wait, don't tell me or yeah. something's going to happen. Yeah. And most people mm -hmm. will quietly go, well, that's kind of weird in their own heads. Be like, that's, that's kind of strange that that guy's doing that. And you'll see it and you'll say out loud in front of everybody. <laughs> Why is he doing that? <laughs> Like, there's not going to be anything you're going to let slide. You know why? <laughs> why? Because I know everyone else in the room is too afraid to say anything. But somebody needs to say I don't think, something. It's not that they're I think afraid. You're, I think you enjoy it. I think it's, I know, <laughs> I know everybody in that room could have made the choice to go. Yeah. What is happening? <laughs> right. But they made the choice not to, for whatever reason. Yeah. But if I go... <laughs> But what that does is when they don't say something, uh -huh. the whole room gets tense. Right. Even if it's a slight thing. It's mm -hmm. everyone going, okay, that's a weird thing, but I don't want to say anything. But yeah, yeah. Say. Also, I'm with comics. Right. So comics always want to say something. <laughs> if they see something, they want to say something. Well, and yeah. so they're making a conscious decision uh -huh. to go against their instinct of going, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so what I'm doing is releasing the tension in the room. Yeah. Going, <laughs> now I don't do it every time sometimes I wait for the person to leave yeah and so when that person leaves uh -huh. I'm just like we all saw that right and everybody goes yes <laughs> but it's just to relieve the tension in a room yeah because I feel everybody tense up so how are you when you're not with comics are you the same way yeah yeah because there's always some <laughs> shit happening my favorite thing is I being think... in public and something wild's going on and making eye contact with another black person especially another black woman and we just go Girl, girl. <laughs> and we had a 45 minute conversation in two words. Or it's like, girl, like, bitch, you see this? It's like, girl, yes, I do. Because there's now all let me ask it. you this. Let me ask you this. Hmm. White question. Ew, fun. If I, it, could I be on that elevator? I'm not Tom Papa. I'm just this guy. But guy. Yeah, I'm Bob, whoever. Mm -hmm. Could I be on it? And could you read me and we could have that same conversation Absolutely. with our eyes? I've had it with a lot of people. You'll pick that out. Yeah, it's when something wild will happen, you'll look at somebody and go, I go. <laughs> I've, I mean, it's... it's, it's and, in and is that because you uh, are, throughout you navigating your life this way, mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like you have a good batting average in reading people? Um, if I'm not trying to date them, yes. <laughs> I'm trying right. to see just dick. people on the street, the He's extras of your life. If I'm trying to you're see his dick. You're good with that. I'm fuck. I'm blind. <laughs> I can't hear. I I know. I'm here. No evil. Speak no evil because this man is evil. Um, but <laughs> if I'm not trying to date him. I see everything. Uh huh. But if I like him, but if you, yeah, I'm blindfold me, gag me. I am. 
I'm in the dark. I'm in the dark. You I lose no your key. superpower. I lose my superpower. You lose your superpower. Superman is, I'm telling you, I'm on Krypton. I have nothing. That's hilarious. If I like this man, I skills <laughs> out the fucking window. I. That's so funny. Listen, I'm a newborn cult. <laughs> <laughs> Legs shaking. I'm Bambi on ice. I am screwed. What's the longest relationship you've been in? A year. A year? Well, here's the thing. No. The longest relationship I've ever been in was eight years. Eight? Uh huh. How'd well, you go from one to eight? Well, because the one year relationship was where I had a title. Okay. The eight year relationship, I did not. Oh, uh, you were for eight years. You yeah. didn't have a title, but we went back and forth. Uh huh. So in it, and out. And, mm-hmm. Uh huh. And so I would date someone else, and he'd be I don't know doing whatever. Right. And then we'd pop back up, and then he'd be gone because there was like him. Uh-huh. So basically, I was in Atlanta Frankensteining men together. So I hung out with him and got kept my car fixed, and there was a dude uh, <laughs> who I just slept with. Uh-huh. But that never, we never dated. Yeah. Slept together, uh-huh. and then I had a homeboy who uh, would like take me out. Mm-hmm. So those three men together were one boyfriend, right? And then I actually had like a boyfriend in between. Uh huh. And so, yeah, but yeah, that was the longest. So the last boyfriend I had cheated on me. Uh huh. Uh-huh. That was the one year guy. Yeah. He cheated on you. Yeah. How'd you find out? He told me. What? Repeatedly. <laughs> what do you mean? He kept telling me. And every time the details changed. So I was like, I've been doing stand-up for about four years, and then he was an open micer. Uh-huh. And so we started hanging out, and I made the ultimate comic mistake of not seeing if he was funny before I let him see my boobs. Oh, no. Yeah. He, you let him see your boobs, and then you saw he wasn't that good. Wasn't that good. Uh, and so very upsetting. That is very upsetting. But he was a very nice man. So I was like, you know, things get better. Uh huh. And so <laughs> it eventually they do. And so the yeah. guy I went back and forth for years because I went back and forth with him from 2007 until 2015. And it's a long run. Uh, all of my 20s. Um, <laughs> all of my 20s. Yes, Tom, I know the math. Right. And I was just, and I said, it's a long, because I, yeah. I said then one day, I was like, you got my 20s, you won't get my 30s. Right. Uh huh. And so I had a used car. And so I was at my ex's house getting my brakes done because I could not afford to take them to the dealership he worked at. Uh Uh-huh. And because my car, when I say I need my brakes done, I sound like a marching band. coming (laughs) And also one time I had to press my brakes and I had to press all the way to the floor. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm going to die tonight. (laughs) So I take my car to him. Uh Uh-huh. And that is when my boyfriend cheated on me. Because he said he felt bad that my ex could do something for him, do something for me he could not do. And I said, you have a theater degree. He is a mechanic. There's no way you could have done it because you literally don't have the skill. That's a bogus excuse. It was not a great excuse, but that was the excuse that I was given. And so, and it was with his ex. And he put it in your face like he told you flat out. He came while I was hosting an open mic. What? And I was in between comics and he told me. I don't like this guy one bit. Listen, it's fine. He's doing whatever he's doing. But no, no one likes God bless. And then, <laughs> God bless, he's doing the best with what he can. And then he, um, but also he would do stuff like, he was, uh, he would try to isolate me from my friends. As in like, he tried to tell me like, oh, people don't really like you and da 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 da. And I was like, interesting. I said, but you don't know, this is something I'm insecure about. So I went to my friends, I was like, he's telling me this. And I'm like, no, stop listening to him. He's a jackass. And I was like, yeah, Gracias. sounds like a weak little man. Mm-hmm. He was just taller, but it's not hard to be taller than me. I'm 5'4". And so... <laughs> You're five um, four. Mm-hmm. No, you're not. Nobody believes me. I'm five four. That's amazing. Doctor's office will tell you. It's because I think it's because of my afro. Uh uh-uh. uh Or it's my personality. But yeah. no one believes I'm as short as I am. But yeah. if you stand, if a tall person stand next no. to me, because my brother's almost a foot taller than me. Five that. four. Yeah. Nobody believes me. I'm a tiny lady. No, you have a you have a five nine spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on ten toes down, Papa. So, yeah, and then we'd be fine, and then Uh he'd pop up and go, hey, well, remember I told you it happened like this? Well, it actually happened like this. And then a few weeks would go by, and he'd go, well, I feel so bad. It actually happened like this. And I was like, why do you keep bringing? I was like, I forgave you. I understood. Why do you keep bringing this up? Yeah. And then eventually I was like, I can't deal with this anymore. Yeah. And then. He wasn't getting, like, he wasn't. Destroying you? I guess that was what the campaign was. You kept on going and. Didn't seem how dare brought to, I yeah. continue to live, continue to take breath. Jeez. Right. And so I was like, uh-uh. And then he started popping up at my house. 
What? He popped up at my homeboy's house. No. Yeah, I'd call the cops on him. What? Mm-hmm. He beat me to my house one time. This I is... saw him at a show. Yeah. And so I stayed at my homeboy's house after the show because we were out drinking and stuff. And so he knew where my homeboy lived and he knew I was over there. He saw my car. He came knocking on my homeboy's <laughs> door at three in the morning asking to talk to me. My homeboy was like, go away. What? Mm-hmm. Guys are the worst. Yeah, these guys are the worst. And so now. That thing is such a weird thing. Uh-huh. And so now I'm hoping to get married. <laughs> to <And> him. Absolutely. <laughs> fuck not. Um, I don't even know where he's at. Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Did uh-huh. you, Did he? How did you? How did you? I called rap? the cops on him. And that scared and him. And usually up. when you call the cops on somebody. Yeah. That'll do it. That'll do it. But he was just like, because I remember him getting upset with me, punching a wall. Uh, and I was like, well. Jeez. I was like, well, that's not going to help. All you do is just hurt your hand. Jeez. Oh, yeah, I got him a job one time on a TV show I was working on. Mm. Really? Yeah, this is the thing. If this you, is the comic? Yeah. He was an actor, too. <sighs> it looks like Steve Harris. And so this is the thing. If you deal with me, I'm going to make your life better. Mm-hmm. I always am. I'm only here to bless people. Right. I, and the worst thing I can do is leave you because mm-hmm. dealing with my ex is the best thing I learned as like a woman, especially a black woman, especially when you deal with a black man. Silence is the answer because they're accustomed to their mothers yelling and caring, you know, just your mother right. yells, right. Your mother yells. Yeah. And so <laughs> it's when you're dealing with them and dealing with men in general, they're accustomed mm-hmm. to some women getting upset and da, 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 you want to do this, do that. I get quiet. Uh huh. And that I learned is scarier than anything to me. Right. Because I just go there and I'm going to go, okay. Not used to it. Mm-mm. You want me to carry on. Mm-hmm. You want me to get loud. You want me to be upset. And I don't want to. Yeah, because that's a comfortable space for you to be in. Right. Because then you know you're in full control because I am out of control. Right. My ex, we used to have, to have these conversations, long conversations about our relationship. And one day I went over to his house and I was like, you give me ugly girl problems. I don't have to be here. Right. <laughs> I'm only here because I want to be. Right. So either you act right or I'm gone. Do you want to be here? Yeah. And he acted right for six months. There's such a weird thing. It's, I mean, I guess it happens. I guess women do it too. I had a girlfriend that wouldn't leave at a certain point. But it's not aggressive. Like that guy thing that they're still carrying on. Mm-hmm. Some weird relationship in their head. Mm-hmm. It's all done. You've moved on. You And they're still, yeah. they're still play acting in their head and show up like you've been a part of the conversation for that whole time. It's like talking to your mom when she starts talking to you when she's in the middle of a thought. Yeah, right. So you're like, well, why don't you understand? I was like, because I wasn't at the beginning of this conversation. Yeah, exactly. You were thinking about this. You were talking for 20 minutes in your head. And then you brought me in in the middle of this conversation. <laughs> yeah. So now I don't know why these tomatoes smell like this. <laughs> yeah. But with mom, it's like, okay, it's it's whatever. But with guys, it's it's always a little bit of that of uh, danger involved. Yes, it's danger. And I yeah. think more men do not understand how much danger women are in on a regular basis. I know. Dealing with men is dangerous. It is dangerous. I have two daughters. Yeah. And I hope they have weapons. And I, I, I uh, you know, I'm always very conscious of, uh, you know, you don't want to scare them, but at the same time, scare them. you have to let, you have to know, like, getting rid of a guy is not something you should just be casual. About. Like, you've got to, this, this is a, This is an you endeavor. To, you have to back out slowly. Yeah, and you've got to keep your eyes open at all because you don't know what you're dealing with. And they'll pop up and all this other stuff. Because I remember yeah. like back in the day, it was just like, I remember like when I was younger, it's like some guy would if he was going on a date, he'd come and pick you up. Mm-hmm. And then we, and then it was like as I got older, it was like, mm, don't let them know where you live. Right. Don't let them know where you live. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, blocking on a phone is the best thing that ever got invented for anybody. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was like, because so many times you would just have to change your numbers. The yeah, man was blowing that's their phone right. up. Yeah. But it was just like, if he knew where you worked or he knew where you lived, uh-huh. it was always an issue. Yeah. So it was just like, no, you can't know where I work. You can't know. Where... And then for me, men finding out what I do for a living, mm-hmm. they get so weird. That's got, yeah, that's got to be. They get so weird because it's just like, one, we've told men that they're funny. Uh huh. And so, how dare I? And they're in charge. And they're in charge. And I'm just like, listen, I'll let a man be in charge. Uh huh. But here's the thing: these men are upset because it's like, oh, men, women don't want men to lead. 
That's not what happened. Too many women were led to their death and their detriment mm-hmm. because a man led. Mm-hmm. So now women are to a place where it's just like, I don't have to let an imbecile lead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not being forced to get married. Yeah. I'm not getting forced into these positions. Yeah. So I'm not going to let not necessity. This, no, I'm not going to let this fucker lead me off a cliff. Yeah. Yeah. You want to lead? Then show me you can do it mm-hmm. because I'm already doing what I'm doing. Yeah. So I have no problem letting a man lead, but I'm not going to let any man just cause you have testicles right. <laughs> lead me. Yeah. So I have a whole family that I take care of. Yeah. I am a business. Yeah. So if you're going to lead, if you're going to be head of a household, mm-hmm then show me that I can trust you to make a decision about yourself and me and future children and my family. Yeah. I have no problem letting a man lead. Yeah. I have a problem with letting a, land, a man lead me to my destruction. That I have a problem with. Now, as you self-professed in mm-hmm. the beginning, mm-hmm. when you get your your superpower gets diminished when you get around these people who... Right. Our potential. Right. Can you see that list that you just went through clearly? Your gut will always, you can always, there's, women's intuition is a thing for a reason. Yeah. And that's the thing you have to tell your daughters. If you don't feel safe, you're not. Right. Always. Right. You don't, I might not think, I'm going to find out later. There's this guy I was talking to, he's been lying to me for five months. Uh-huh. But once I found out the lie, I was like, I need space. Mm-hmm. And I've not spoken to him mm-hmm. since January 16th. <laughs> Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Because my space was, when I need space, I become NASA. Right. And he was lying for six months? For five months lying to me. Mm. Just because he needed attention. <laughs> this is what we don't understand. Men uh, need so exhausting. attention. Oh, yeah. Men need attention. Men need to feel needed. Mm-hmm. That's what this whole argument is. Women don't need us. Women don't mm. need us. Of course we need you. The trash goes out on Tuesday. <laughs> What are you Who's about? the perfect guy? Like, what career would you? Like, I would, honestly, it's one. I would love a retired athlete. Not a lot of CT. You know, just be mm-hmm. for the CTEs, right? Um, <laughs> not trying to be rude, but you know, a concussion is a concussion. Yeah, bitch. it gets a little weird. Um, <laughs> We're talking about the long haul, just the, for the long term. <laughs> yeah. There's any holes in that cranium? I, Man's brain looks like Swiss cheese on his MRI. <laughs> I need to pack up my shit. He might forget me tomorrow. So it's, I wouldn't say so much of, of a profession, but a success. Uh-huh. Right? Right, right. And so it's, I don't want, full, I don't, I can't do potential. Mm-hmm. It has to be someone who's fully potential. Yeah. But then there's like, I was at one person where you're just like, but for you, mm-hmm. <laughs> I will figure this out Yeah. for <laughs> anybody make, else. We can make this work. We can make this work for you. You're grandfathered in. Yeah. But for any of the rest of these men, <laughs> it, because it's, it's a known fact that most divorces happen because of finances. Yeah. It's a redu- not, not you fell out of love, mm-hmm. not because somebody cheated because of money. Yeah. And so we have to be, there's a term in, I don't know if you're a practicing Christian at all. I am. Um, are you Catholic or Protestant? Catholic. Okay. I don't know if y'all do what we doing. So there's a term called. <laughs> Probably being, a weirder version of it. Oh, I just was <laughs> smoked. Uh, um, there's a term that we, uh, that black Christians use called being equally yoked. Uh huh. And so you and your partner are in similar situations. Mm-hmm. So they can understand what's happening. You understand? Because uh-huh. for so long, women weren't. Right. But that's what what we taught was expected. Yeah. And so because the man was leading and providing or whatever, because this whole thing now is like the traditional wife and the traditional wife. Here's the thing. All these men are running around asking for traditional wives, but they're not trying to be traditional husbands. Right. If you want a traditional wife, you have to be a traditional husband, Uh which means she does not work. Right. She cannot be a traditional wife and then still going to work every day. You're doing this wrong. You yeah. lied to her. Right. You're asking You, her. you yeah. have to provide. Right. If she's a traditional. If tradi- that's what you're looking for. If that's what you are looking for, a traditional wife, mm-hmm. then you, your money needs to be to a point where she does not work and your children are worth taking care of. Right. Because that's what you're supposed to be doing mm-hmm. as a traditional husband. Right. She should never work. Because she takes care of the home. Yeah. So the concept of being equally yoked, it's just like, I'm very successful in a very difficult industry. Right. He needs to be successful in his industry. Yeah. Because no one resents you more. Yeah. Than a man who makes less money than you. 
is that man who cheated on me yeah. also made less money than me, and I was just working in an office. Right. And so it was just like, I want to go to the Renaissance Fair, but we couldn't go because he couldn't pay for it. Right. Yeah, it's tricky. You see what I'm saying? 100%. And so no one wants to act like men don't resent women from being successful. That's what most of this argument is. Uh -huh. So you have to control women in another way. Mm -hmm. so it's just like, okay, well, let's reverse Roe v. Wade. Now we have these women under duress again. Because people, because it's always this thing yeah. of like, well, you know, it's men are always afraid. Well, this girl's trying to trap me with a baby. You cannot trap a man with a baby. Yeah, exactly. You trap a woman <laughs> with a baby. Yeah, it's pretty easy for the guy to get out of that one. <laughs> it's pretty easy. He literally, we needed him for 2.5 seconds. <laughs> right. Truly, scientifically. And so this, I, so for me, it's. This idea is like, okay, I give you one, your grandfather and the rest of you jokers. It's, you have to understand what I'm doing. Also the yeah. idea of like, well, are you going to talk about me on stage? Sir, I promise you, you said nothing interesting. <laughs> I promise you that. But it's like, there's a weird competition thing. Yeah. So I had a guy say to me one time, he's like, I bet I'm funnier than most of your friends. I was like, my friends have specials. <laughs> yeah. And last time I checked, yeah. you've never been on Netflix. So <laughs> what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Oh, and it, 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 was, it was very much being funny as an ego thing. They feel like it's a challenge sometimes. Uh -huh. Also, I travel a lot for work. I'm going to South by Southwest on Friday. I'm going to be gone for a week. Right, exactly. And so a lot of... Is it... It's got to get... It's got to be a weird thing because the the more successful you get, the smaller the pool mm -hmm. of guys that you're now able to choose from. I mean, it's, it's definitely out there, but, like, you're upping the, the guys... Mm -hmm. And then add on top of that, I'm black and plus sized. So you're sexy, you're saying? Yes, thank you so much. But <laughs> when you look at dating apps, black women and Asian men have the least results on dating apps. I feel like we should just date really? each other and make giant mathematically <laughs> advanced basketball players. But, you know, what do I know about Korean men? Is that um, true? Black women and Asian and men. Asian have men. Because black women are seen as aggressive and black, uh, Asian men aren't seen as masculine. Even though they're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So they have the worst results. So we have the worst results on dating apps. Yeah. Right. Especially black women. Interesting. I was on Match.com for like a couple months and I would see people would pick every single race. Mm -hmm. Every single race. But black. Really? This man was never going to meet a Pacific Islander. <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea what a Sephardic Jew is. Well, I know what it is. It's not black. It's not black. That's what he does now. You've never been to Bangladesh. You've never seen these women. You don't even know what they look like. You don't even know what color they are. Right. That's what me and her are the same complexion. She's from Bangladesh. Yeah. We're the same complexion. Her hair is just straight. Shut up. Uh, so it's what's so in that. So yeah. I kept getting just all of this. Just you just get so much information. We're just like, what do you need apps for? You're a, you're you're a star. Yeah, this is you're a TV star. Yeah, but you're what a is comedy it? star. What's more intimidating to a man than a woman who is confident and successful? And someone yeah. who has the ability in his mind to embarrass him in public. Mm hmm Because also the thing is like I do stand up, so I'm smart. Yeah. So these little stunts, the stunts? Yeah. Because listen, I've fallen for a couple of stunts. And some of them, listen, when I was younger, you could get me with a stunt. Now, what do you mean? What do you, what's a stunt like? Oh, a stunt is um Basically, any type of nonsense shenanigans that a uh -huh. man can get up to. Right. Just really trying to make you feel. Just trying to fool you. Mm -hmm, trying to fool you. Trying to put the wool over your eyes. Uh -huh. And so it's like, <laughs> sir, I'm a college graduate. Because here's the other thing that always bugged me. It's like, I'm still pretty. So yeah. it's like, that's what I don't get. Like, I've never understood. It's like, why are y'all playing in my face? Right. It's like, you're trying to act like I'm unattractive because I'm a bigger person. We've all seen ugly, skinny people. So what are we talking about now? <laughs> right. But I really did have men say, oh, well, usually girls that are your size are nicer. And I was like, well, those girls must be ugly and not confident. What? Yeah. Nice. Men, men are bold. Men are bold. Jeez. Or you should be glad that someone's on the, like, go on internet. Go on internet. Yeah. And see, first of all, we have to turn the comment section off on everything. Oh, come on. Yeah, exactly. All of them. Why do we need this? No, and so exactly. the number of times it's just like. Plus size women especially are just bombarded with just yeah it's well why don't you do this and da 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 somebody was trying to say something ugly to me yeah on one of my friends Instagrams and I was just like you need to get your fans yeah 
Because if I say something, I'm going to get kicked off Instagram. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, it's so cowardly, though. Yeah. But I'm, it is. I, that's Honestly, that is a thing that I, like, we've talked about that before. Of, you know, women aren't safe. And you're kind of unaware of that as a guy. But, and I got that. But mm-hmm. the one thing, the other thing that I didn't get was how nasty men are to women mm-hmm. online. Mm-hmm. on comments on of everything it's like you like we all put out specials or put stuff out there in the media and we all have to deal with some little shortcomings and mm-hmm. some people not liking you and mm-hmm. shitting on you but there is a guarantee that if you're a woman putting it out that you are going to get mm-hmm. at least 25 mm-hmm. percent of just you're fat you're ugly mm-hmm. you're a bitch why are you talking? All, like, and usually those men are poor. Oh, the, 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 troglodytes. In, in character. A hundred percent. In finances. Oh, yeah. like I was, In uh, spirit. In spirit and everything. And so like a few years ago on New Year's Eve, I was on CNN and Don and um, Don Lemon asked me what my New Year's resolution was. And I said, no more broke dick. Uh-huh. And the number of men that borrowed their friend's cell phone to get mad at me on Twitter was amazing. Really? Yeah. So I was like, first, I was like, like, oh, she was drunk. I was solid as a fuck. I was sober as a stone. Uh-huh. <laughs> because we were near a bar that didn't care that we were shooting. Mm-hmm. So we couldn't get a drink. Uh-huh. So I couldn't drink if I wanted to. Don Lemon has his own sad. She was having a great night. But <laughs> so it was, it was interesting because I said... No more broke dick. I said, but the hard part is broke dick is amazing because it has to be. So I gave them a compliment, but they didn't hear that. A bunch of men I don't know felt like I rejected them. Oh, my God. And then, like, um, a year later, I'm at a bar with this guy that I'm dating or seeing, and this little ugly man comes up to me and him. The man that I'm with, tall, gorgeous. This hobbit comes (laughs) up with his hobbit sidekick. Uh Uh-huh. So uh, Bilbo and Negro Baggins come up fucking with me. <laughs> and he starts talking about what I said. And I was yeah. just like, oh, yeah, it was a fun thing. And he was like, yeah, you know, all these people. And it was like, at first it was like, fine. Uh-huh. And then he started getting weird. And he was just like, yeah, you know, all these girls were sharing. And I was like, yeah, I said something on TV. And also it was the Vulture article. It went viral. Like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, you know, it just really bothered me. And da-da-da. I said, well, you could get your money up. Mm-hmm. That's an option. <laughs> You could not be in the situation. That's something you could do for yourself. <laughs> and he's starting to get like aggressive with me. And this dude that I'm with, he's like, "No, nah, man, you're good. You're cool. Don't worry about it." And uh-huh. eventually, and his friend starts to see him getting riled up. Yeah. So that dude at a certain point was like, "Okay, uh-huh. let's let's go." And then we head to another show, and the dude I was he looked at me. He was like, he was telling one of our other friends about it. He was like, "This dude came up to her. He said, if I was not there, she would have had a problem." Wow. Like legitimate, like Jeez. just because he felt bad. God. Because I said something. Yeah. So that's why I said to him, I was like, well, you could just get your money up. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't feel bad if you made, it's like, it's like I did, I wasn't, yeah. I, like, well, I felt like you were talking to me. I said, if you felt like I was talking to you, then I was talking to you. Yeah, that's what's so weird about it. Mm-hmm. It's but, like to deal with somebody saying something to your face one on one and you criticize somebody, like, still you should be. Strong enough to weather that. Yes. But when somebody's saying it out to the ether and you're pulling it out of the satellite feed and saying she's talking to me, that is really someone who's needs to be adjusted. Right. Also, you felt like that you had any... First of all, you had to feel like... To feel like I was talking to you mm-hmm. meant that you felt like you could be with me. Yeah. Which is because why would you feel like I was talking to you? Mm, right. Because then there was a guy on Instagram who just blowing up the Daily Show's Instagram, being like, "She said this about broke men. This is just very wild." I'm um, just like this guy who comes up, and I'm just like, I didn't even know you liked women. Um, <laughs> just from what his Instagram was showing me, I'm just yeah. like, I don't understand. I was like, this was giving very much like I didn't know you were sleeping with it. Like I just was looked at his Instagram. And I'm just like, sir, me saying something is the last thing you need to be. Yeah. Because I don't think anybody of any denomination huh. background is really trying to sleep with you to start with. <laughs> so you need to be less worried about me yeah. and less worried about the stringy, just what's happening, cave dwelling <laughs> over Don. Like, just, I mean, dye your hair, live a life, but you're looking like Sherbert. So I just was very concerned, very confused. And he was just like blowing up 
the show's Instagram and then commenting on Trevor's page and on my page saying like weird really like asking that I needed to be reprimanded. Oh my God. For what I said. Whoa. And the show needed to give a response and they were being irresponsible. And it, it was like, Jeez. it was, and eventually I was just like, I just reported him as spam. And yeah. that's the way you get rid of things. Yeah. Because if you're like, this person is truly disrespectful, rude, yeah. doesn't help. You report something as spam. Yeah. That can get something taken off of Instagram much faster. Do you have the ability to, with your own stuff, to not engage? To just. I don't engage. What yeah. I do is if I see a comment that I don't like, I just delete it. Mm-hmm. And then I block the person. Yeah. Because so what easy. I'm not, no, what I'm not going. First of all, you came to my internet looking for me. Right. I didn't come looking for you. I don't <laughs> yeah. know who you are. Right. So you felt like that you wanted to come into my space and say something to me. Yeah. So I deleted it. Like that Cleopatra thing. Like there was a joke. Um. And so there was a Cleopatra TV show on Netflix and people were mad that Cleopatra was depicted by a black woman uh-huh. being played by a black woman. And so I made a joke on the show being like, all right, uh, you take Cleopatra, we'll take Jesus. Right. <laughs> and people just started flooding my TikTok, and was just like, you need to say something back about what you said. I'm like, I'm not saying a fucking thing to you. <laughs> yeah, right. It was truly a joke. Yeah. Also, we all know Jesus is Middle Eastern. Stop <laughs> it. So it, I at one point just started cutting my comments off. Uh-huh. And then people were like, you need to be brave and respond to me. And that's the thing that makes me so mad because I want to go, who the fuck do you think you are? Yeah. And I have to take time out of my <laughs> abundantly blessed Christian life <laughs> to talk to you. Yeah. About a joke. Mm-hmm. That's what you think I should be doing with my time. And that they think that they're your boss. They, 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 they Don't really you <laughs> have somewhere to be? Isn't there a child? That you should be raising the yeah. wrong way. Don't you have something better to do with your time? Yeah. Than to come over to the trailer where I pay rent. Yeah. And fucking with me? No, you don't. Yeah. Because you watch television because we're entertainers. Yeah. So you have your life and then you look to me for entertainment. Yeah, But exactly. I am not beholden to you. Right. Because I said a joke. Yeah. I didn't say anything offensive. I didn't say anything hurtful. I didn't say anything that ends in an ism yeah. or an obia. So <laughs> right. because I did not say anything truly disrespectful, yeah. I don't have to be brave and talk to you, you goofy bitch. <laughs> Go back to you and your illegitimate, illiterate children <laughs> and live your fucking life. Because the worst thing I could do was tell you about yourself. Because I had somebody, it's like, we did a thing on the show one time about, like, black women's equal pay day, uh-huh. right, is a day. Because black women make 59 cents on the dollar to a white man. Uh-huh. White women make 80 cents. So when they said this, like, women make 80 cents on the dollar, no, white women make 80 cents. Uh-huh. Black women make 59 cents, uh-huh. and every woman of color makes less than us, right, for the most part, statistically. Mm-hmm. And so I said something on the show about it, and some man commented and, of course, said something about my weight. And then someone else chimed in. and I And I literally said back to him, you took time out of your day to find me on the internet to say something about my weight. Yeah. That's what you did with your time today? And then he said back to me, well, I would tell you why you're wrong about black women's equal payday, but I don't have time. I said, oh, that's the real problem. Uh, then why did you say what you said? Yeah. And he didn't have a response. And then some other woman said something to me. He's like, you're this and da-da-da, and she is the wrong you're. <laughs> and so all I did was respond with asterisk and the correct your. Yeah. And then she goes, Maggie, she said something ugly to me. Uh-huh. And I said, just, and all I commented back was the correct your. Yeah. And then she goes, LOL, well, I guess autocorrect isn't always correct. So what are we doing now? That's the thing. Yeah, that response thing. I mean, I, I stopped looking at comments 15 years ago. As you should have. We should but, have had them on to start with. But 90% of it was if I if you did respond and say like, hey, that was mean, then be like, LOL, love your stuff. Just, you're just kidding. It's like, how could you be so venomous? Well, and I then said, that thing. I said that on, I think I was like on Twitter one time or X, whatever the fuck it's called now. And I was like, and I was saying that like talking about negative comments. Mm-hmm. And then a man posted, well, if we say something nice, then you don't respond. And then a black woman commented, then it wasn't about giving her a compliment. It was about getting attention. Yeah. 100%. So it was never about getting, a. it was never about that. Yeah, it's all. So what I is. try to do is when I get good comments, I try to hard. I try, it's like, it's also, uh, it's another job. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. truly another job. But I try to comment and say stuff back to people like, thank you and da, 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 da. But when people have truly negative things to say, mm-hmm. I just delete it. 
I just yeah, and I tell people great. all the time. You can just curate your own feed. Just turn this yeah. it's your Instagram. Yeah. Just delete it and block them. Yeah, it's your social done. media. Just delete it and block them. Why go back and forth with somebody? Yeah. They're not coming to buy tickets. Right. They're not gonna <laughs> buy your merch. All they're trying to do is steal your joy for the day. Mm-hmm. And if you can just go to someone, hey, yeah, I don't know what happened to you today. <laughs> right. You could just go because Amy Miller showed me the best thing. Because uh-huh. men leave very ugly, mean comments. Yeah, them, right. And she said all she does is just question what they said. Uh huh. You're da 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 da. Well, what makes you say that? Mm-hmm. And then she just wise them oh, until really? they are exhausted. <laughs> but there's also Marcella Guayo and Solomon Giorgio. They're very good. Marcella's like. Marcella's like, oh, you want to be? Let's go. And she's coming for next. <laughs> and she's great at it. Yeah, if you're she's, good at it and enjoy it, that's great. one thing. Marcella yeah. is a bitch. And yeah. she takes it as a compliment. <laughs> right. She's an amazing comic, but she is a beautiful bitch. <laughs> right. Because if I ever, ever get a comment where I'm like, yo, I'm texting Marcella and going, Please show me how to defeat this person because I don't have the skills. Yeah, the instinct. I don't have the instinct. Yeah. I don't have that thing in me where you could just like. It's not natural. Damn. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because everyone has different skills. Yeah, yeah. And she's an amazing comedian and she's a beautiful, sweet person, but yeah. she is a bitch. <laughs> and I love her yeah. because you have to have I, these people in the world. Yeah, I know. And she's the same way as me. She'll just go, Yeah. hey, <laughs> what is this? They're, like her special's out? Yeah. It's, um, it's on HBO Max? Uh-huh. It's amazing. Is it? But the thing, but I, but as much as I love Marcella as a comic, yeah. I love her as a person. Yeah. Because Marcella has the confidence. Yeah. To be a bitch, you have to be confident. Oh, 100%. And I don't have that little, yeah. it's like I'm confident, but that little. Yeah, no, there's that little thing. Just yeah, that little, I know. That you need to just go, <laughs> come here. Like yeah. she's coming, like next. Yeah. She, I don't, she needs more shoes. Yeah. Because she steps on <laughs> next and self-esteem, but it's self-esteem at all times. And I wish I had that part. Yeah. But. I don't know. I mean, it, yeah. It activates. Sometimes me. I wish I had it too. It activates the, when I need it to. Right, right. For instance, when I said, the, the, like, just now, it's just like, listen, raise your illegitimate and illiterate children uh-huh. and get off my internet. Right. Because I don't know how you're messaging me <laughs> on a pay as you go phone anyway. <laughs> right. Don't you have to put some more quarters in your internet at your house? Yeah. Or are you on the library Wi Fi watching your child <laughs> struggle with their reading skills? The problem is, you could, be, you could be good at it, but it's also, what a waste of energy. At times, you and know, develop, you're living your life and doing your thing. It, I think, but sometimes it's yeah. like some people are born athletes. Yeah. And some people have <laughs> to learn. True. And I would have, and it's just like some yeah. people come out the womb, bam, soccer star. Football it's star. true. Volleyball phenom. That is true. And other people have to practice and practice yeah. and practice. And they never get as good. And never get as good. No. Because when someone has natural born yeah, talent. Yeah, exactly. It's like there's those <laughs> comics that you see and you're just like, yeah, Fuck. yeah. Fuck. They, they didn't have to learn anything. They didn't have to learn anything. <laughs> but so, and what's interesting is sometimes when people look at you as a comic, yeah. you're like, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? This is always hard. Yeah. Always impossible. Most always jobs, vulnerable. The always. longer you do them. Yeah. Always vulnerable. Always. Most jobs, the longer you do it, yeah. the easier it gets. If I'm putting in windshields and Buicks yeah. by year 10, <laughs> I'm not even thinking about it. Because this machine's holding it most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Bring yeah. me the class of 87. Yeah. Right? Stand-up does not get easier the longer you do it. No. It's, especially if you're trying to keep creating. Yeah. And keep growing. Yeah. And then you're always in a, in a space of being vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Always. Because if you're not, then it's, there's nothing worse than just seeing a comic go up on stage and you're just like, who the fuck is this? Yeah, just mailing it in. and yeah. I, Listen, we've all mailed in. But once you see somebody become FedEx. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for for it's years. All packages all day long. All you do, you are the U.S. Postal Service. Yeah. <laughs> Where, why are you not in all blue and rolling a basket down somebody's street? Because you want to see, because the thing that I do love about being a comic is that comics, unlike actors, mm-hmm. there's more opportunities to perform as a comic. Right. And I think there's so many bad comics. Yeah. That when comics see good comics. Yeah. 
You're like, put him on everything. <laughs> everything. Yeah. I'm calling everybody. Because when yeah. and that's the thing that I love about comics, because it's just like when someone's good, yeah. everyone's like, yo, have you heard of Yeah. Have you heard of this person? Mm-hmm. Have you heard of Daniel Perez? Right. Have you heard of Madison Shepard? Have you heard of these people? It spreads quick. It spreads quick. Have you heard of yeah. Jessica Michelle Singleton? Have you heard of these people? Have you heard of Lace Larrabee? Oh my God, Lace is great. She was on this. You got to see Lace. You got to see Lace. You got to see Lace. Yeah. But if someone's bad, you're like, like can you give them? I don't even know the word. Rec- no Ablo recommendation. <laughs> no, I can't help. He's trash. Get him off the stage. Go with God. Go- Ooh, listen. Go with God. Oh. Could you imagine? Could you give them- hey, go with God. Go with God. Yo, let me tell you something. Sometimes some stuff is just so dismissive. I know. But it's so it's like, be blessed. Bless your heart. Bless- Yo, as a Southerner, I get it. But go with God. God, honestly, listen. It's like there was a thing. It's like telling somebody get the lily. Yeah. Have you heard this phrase? No. It's a fine southern phrase. Yeah. Telling someone to get the lily. Yeah. The lily is what they put in the hands of dead people. Oh right. She's just like, keep on, you go get the lily, and it's a very. <laughs> That's a good one.